Now we need to talk about something called NLS, which you can see here is called National Language Support or Native Language Support. And it was created by Hewlett Packard and the Hewlett, Hewlett Packard Unix, HP Unix, um, to produce localizable software. And you can see here it's been it's used by IBM and Sun Microsystems and so on. Now, the way it works in data stage is that let me just read this here. If you have NLS enabled, and in fact we do, I'm going to show you this here inside data stage. You'll have a, you'll often see NLS referenced here. So all I've done, and we're going to cover this in a minute. If you go to CSV, double click on it, and you go to this NLS map, you'll see these things. You see all these entries here, and some of them are UTF and UTF-16 and so on. Um, what is happening here is data stage when it reads your data from whatever source you have, it needs to interpret that data internally. And when it does that, it sort of handles the data in RAM, in memory. <coughs> and you can see here, string data represents unmapped bytes. So you have essentially strings and U strings when you have NLS enable parallel jobs support two types of underlying character data sets. So you've got strings and U strings. When the string data uh, is mapped, it means that it is, instead of data stage using its own internal unmapped system, which essentially means ASCII, if the data that you've got is essentially ASCII, there's no mapping required. But if it needs to be mapped onto a different system, then it is called mapped. And uString data is one of those mappings. So uString data represents mapped full Unicode UTF-16, which we just saw in data stage, UTF-16 data. So the, you can see here the car, the var car, and the long var car SQL types relate to underlying string, type, st string types where each character is 8 bits and does not require mapping. So this is what I meant earlier about ASCII. Essentially, if your data is already in ASCII, there's no mapping required. But as soon as you leave the world of ASCII, you need to do a map. And it says here you can, however, specify that these data types are extended. And you'll see that in, in data stage. We'll cover that later. Uh, there's a dropdown that says extended. And in that case, the strings, um, they're taken as U strings and do require mapping. Uh, they're specified as such by selecting an extended checkbox for the column in the edit metadata dialog box. An extended field appears in the columns grid and extended car, var car, and long var car columns. Uh, you will see Unicode listed as something you can select. In, in car, in var car, and in long in var car types relate to underlying U string types, so they do not need to be explicitly extended. So here I'm just going to show you a very simple example of this. If we have a sequential file on the left, and we have one on the right, and I open up our CSV, the one on the left, and I go to the columns. We're going to cover all this in detail for now, but later, but for now just sort of stick with me here because we're only talking about in, in LS. If I create a column, and I call it, for example, first name, and then I go over to SQL type, where you should immediately start seeing some things we've been looking at just now. And I say, well, I want this to be a uh, in var car. And then I go to extended. Now I can see, or not, what is available under extended options. And you see there's nothing here. But if I selected var car, and I say, well, I, I, what are my options here? And I double click. Now we see Unicode. And that is the map. And then later on, you can give it the length and so on. So and whether or not it's uh, nullable. We'll cover these things later. But the point is, if we are using a mapping, you're going to see that extended column we had just talked about listed there. And that's really what it, what it meant here. Um, they are set specified. You can specify that these data types are extended, in which case they're taken as U strings and do require mapping. So the takeaway here is actually pretty straightforward. Don't get too confused. Essentially what you've got here is you have strings, like you would expect, and you also have U strings. U strings are just Unicode strings. And if you're using just regular strings, but you want them mapped to Unicode, then you need to use these mappings, which you do through extended. But if you're not really sure which one you really want to use, just as a matter of course, use an N car or an N var car, an N 
varchar, long in varchar, because all of those relate back to Unicode strings, and you don't need to explicitly extend any of them. And that's really what we saw here. If I select n varchar and go to extended, this isn't even an option, because the underlying representation for that data is going to be Unicode anyway, and that's generally what we what we want. If you're having trouble with any of these things, uh, you'll see diagnostic information in the director. So you can sort of use what you've learned here to figure out whatever problems you've come across. And then lastly, when it comes to allow per column mapping, so one of the areas that you may want to sort of fiddle with NLS, because normally you don't need to deal with it all, one time you might want to use NLS is to allow per column mappings, it says. So if you have uh, one column that needs to be Unicode, but then you have some other column that's just good old 8-bit ASCII, then you would want to turn on this option for uh, different mappings. And you can see that here under your stage, and then NLS map tab, and you can click allow per column mapping. But that's fairly unusual. If, if you need it, you'll you'll know because you'll see errors in the director and then you can come back and turn that on.